When it comes to improving your performance and well-being, should you focus on developing your strengths or fixing your weaknesses? Let's see what the science suggests. Hi there, Michelle here from Shell McQuaid TV. We're helping you find ways to move from functioning to flourishing by putting the latest science to the real world test. Recently, I've been helping an amazing group of employees, entrepreneurs and coaches around the world to develop their strengths so they can feel more confident, engaged and happier in their work. But as they completed the free VIA survey to discover what their character strengths were, one of the questions that came up consistently across the group was, should I focus on developing my top strengths or on fixing these weaknesses all the way at the bottom of my report? Now, it's a question worth exploring, as well studies have found that developing four or more of your top strengths, often called your signature strengths, can help you to feel more positive, engaged and satisfied in your work, other research is now suggesting that working on your weaknesses or your lesser strengths may be just as rewarding. So where should you focus your energy and effort when it comes to feeling more engaged, energised and happy in your work? Well, drum roll, please. Now, I've always valued the distinction made by the late Professor Chris Peterson, one of the creators of the VIA survey, that when you look at your survey results, it's important to remember that even those listed all the way at the bottom are still strengths in and of themselves. They're good capabilities you can demonstrate, it's just the survey suggesting that right now you have less capacity for these strengths than those that have been ranked above them. So even when we work on developing our lesser strengths, it would seem reasonable to expect improvements in our feelings of happiness and life satisfaction. And this is exactly what a growing body of evidence is now starting to find. For example, in one recent study, 375 adults were randomly assigned to either one week of using their strengths in a new way, or one week of writing about childhood memories as a placebo control exercise. Now, what was particularly interesting about this experiment is that for those who were asked to use their strengths in a new way, some participants were randomly assigned to working on their top five strengths, and some were assigned to working on their bottom five strengths, but the participants had no idea which ones they'd been given. What the researchers found was that for both groups using their strengths in a new way, there was a measurable increase in happiness for up to three months, and a decrease in short-term depressive symptoms and that participants, whether they were working on their top strengths or their bottom strengths, both described that they were equally enjoy found the exercise equally enjoyable and beneficial for them. Now, one of the other interesting findings that came out of this study was that for those participants who had higher overall scores on their strengths results, they seemed to benefit most from developing their lesser strengths. But for those who had lower overall scores on their survey results, seemed to benefit more from developing their signature strengths. So does this suggest that it doesn't really matter for most of us which strengths we work on developing? Well, kind of. Researchers are now finding that taking a balanced approach to developing our strengths helps us to better adapt to the demands of different situations to obtain better outcomes for us. So one way to think about this is that your top strengths are the ones you're going to find most engaging and energising to use because they feel like you at your best. Your middle strengths can be great ones to draw on in different situations and to build up your capacity for if they're strengths that are important to you. While your bottom strengths can be used if you really need them, but they're generally going to require a fair amount of energy and effort because your brain isn't as well wired in these areas yet. Now, having helped people all over the world better understand their strengths, I've seen again and again that often the most powerful part of becoming more strength-focused is being able to make informed, rather than accidental, choices about where to focus your energy and efforts when it comes to improving your performance and your well-being. Now, to make your decision easier, there are three questions I recommend asking when you're unsure whether you should be building on a strength or fixing one of your weaknesses. Firstly, think about, in this situation, which of your strengths might serve you best? For example, when I'm trying to find new ways to solve a problem, then drawing on my top strengths of curiosity and creativity is really helpful. But when I need to simply stick to the plan and deliver results, then drawing on my lesser strengths of perseverance or prudence in those moments is often more beneficial. 
So start by making a list of all the strengths that might serve you best in this situation. Secondly, for the outcomes that you want, are there particular strengths that would make this more likely and more enjoyable? For example, when it comes to feeling more satisfied at work, studies suggest that it's worth cultivating your curiosity, zest, hope, gratitude and spirituality. But when it comes to enjoying better relationships at work, studies suggest it's worth cultivating your strengths of teamwork, leadership, fairness and kindness. So now highlight on the initial list that you've made any of the strengths that you'd previously noted that might make it also easier and more enjoyable to achieve the outcome you want. This way you're narrowing the field down. Finally, I want you to think about how much energy and commitment you'll need to succeed at this particular task. Now remember that right now you have less capacity in your lower strengths. So when you try to sustain their use for longer periods of time, you're likely to find it more exhausting. For example, one of my lesser strengths is social intelligence, and while I can walk into a room full of strangers and harness these strengths to connect with others better, after a couple of hours I'm completely worn out and I need a rest. My brain isn't wired yet to use this strength for long periods of time. Now fortunately, one of my top strengths is curiosity and I found that I can use this same strength to get interested in what motivates other people in a way that I find energising rather than depleting. My brain can happily use its curiosity for hours. So as you look at your list, think about how long you're going to need to sustain your strengths for this particular task. I find things requiring shorter bursts of attention are generally great opportunities for developing lesser strengths that matter to me, but tasks that require longer periods of energy are generally better suited to my top strengths. The only exception to this rule is the level of commitment I might have for developing a particular strength. For example, when I first took the VIA survey back in 2008, ranked at number 18 was love, definitely one of my lesser strengths at that time. But for the life I wanted to be living and the relationships I wanted to have with my family, my friends and my colleagues, I realised that I was going to need to develop more capacity for love in my life. So understanding that it might take some time, possibly even 8,000 to 10,000 hours of practice, to wire my brain to make the use of this strength engaging, enjoyable and effective, I resolved to try and develop my strength of love whenever I was given the opportunity. Seven years later, love is now my number one strength. So as you look at your shortlist now of possible strengths for the situation you're facing and the outcomes you want to achieve, just check if there are any strengths listed that you know you're committed to developing and could you use this opportunity for some additional practice. In a nutshell, it appears the secret to using our strengths well is to start making mindful choices based on the situations we're facing the outcomes we want to achieve, and the amount of energy and commitment required for developing our chosen strengths. And of course, if you look at your list and at the end of this exercise realise there are no strengths that seem likely to help you achieve what's required, then don't be afraid to go at a weakness head on. Just be realistic about the time, effort and energy, the commitment that it's really going to take to rewire your brain for those particular behaviours. Want to put your strengths to work right now? Then share this video with your family and friends, especially those who might need a little more confidence, energy and engagement in their work. And if you'd like more practical and playful ideas from the latest science on human flourishing, then be sure to subscribe or stop by michellemcquade.com, leave your name and email address so you can hear all our news first. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching Shell McQuaid TV. Remember you are good enough, so don't be afraid to let your strength shine. Until next time, take care. We're helping you find ways to move from functioning to flourishing by putting the latest research up oh, science. <laughs> How many times have I said that? The God. Research. Okay. Deep